Hello guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I am going to discuss about the famous play Stuff Happens written by David Hare, which is actually a response to the Iraq war. Let's take a look at the author David Hare. David Hare was born in Bexhill, East Sussex, England on 5th June 1947. He is an English playwright, screenwriter and theatre and film director. Best known for his stage work, Hare also Hare has also enjoyed great success with films. He was educated at Lansing College and Jesus College, Cambridge. He was a resident dramatist at the Royal Court Theatre in London in 1970-71 and resident dramatist at the Nottingham Playhouse in 1973. He has been associate director of the National Theatre since 1984. He was knighted in 1998 as a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. David Hare's notable works are The Judas Kiss, Plenty, Pravda, The Absence of War, Licking Hitler, Skylight, Blue Room, and Stuff Happens. Hare has received three Golden Globe Award nominations, three Tony Award nominations, and has won a BAFTA Award, a Writers Guild of America Award for the Best Adapted Screenplay, and two Lawrence Olivier Awards. He has also been awarded several critics awards such as the New York Drama Critics Circle Award and received the Golden Bell in 1985. Now speaking about the play Stuff Happens, Stuff Happens is a play by David Hare written in response to the Iraq war. Hare describes it as a history play that deals with recent history. The title is inspired by Donald Rumsfeld's response to the widespread looting in Baghdad. The play presents a mix of viewpoints, including arguments for and against the attack on Iraq. It mixes verbatim recreations of real speeches, meetings, press conferences, and fictionalized versions of private meetings between members of the Bush and Blair administrations. The play also includes international figures such as Hans Blix and Dominic de Villepin. An ensemble cast plays over 40 roles during the three hour play. Although the actors play in the principles, Bush, Rice, Power play only one role. The play focuses on the diplomatic side of the war. The play begins at George Bush's election in November 2000 and ends around April 2004. Parts of the dialogue are direct quotes from the characters' real-world counterparts. The play is about real people and real events that had occurred. So friends, let's move on to a brief summary of the play, Stuff Happens. There are actually many number of characters in the play, but the given characters are playing significant roles. The National Security Council starts the meeting talking about the issues in the Middle East, specifically what's going on between the Israelis and the Palestinians. After talking briefly about this issue, Bush then wants to shift the conversation towards Iraq. The CIA believes that Iraq has a plant at an abandoned warehouse to produce chemical or biological weapons. Since there isn't enough proof, they are told to look more into the issue. Hale then describes how the events of September 11 happened. He gives the exact time the planes crashed into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. It is also explained that the fourth plane was meant to hit the White House, but the passengers were able to prevent that from happening. This is what started the war on the terror between the free and democratic world and terrorism. The war cabinet meets at Camp David to discuss future plans going forward. They decide that Afghanistan can be used as an example to show other countries what happens if they try to use terrorism on other countries. Paul Wolfowitz, Deputy Secretary of Defense and Donald Rumsfeld, American Secretary of Defense, believe that the US should take action on Iraq since it will be less of a risk than Afghanistan and still be able to send a message to other countries. Wolfowitz believes that Saddam Hussein is involved with what happened on September 11. George Bush signs orders to attack Afghanistan with British support. Airstrikes attack 31 different Al-Qaeda and Taliban targets. When the British were able to track down bin Laden, they were ordered to pull out which gave him the chance to go into a different hiding spot of the radar. Bush then talks to Rumsfeld privately to discuss going to war with Iraq. A politician states that the attack on Iraq was controversial and possibly illegal. 
the British decided that they will no longer back up America after these actions because they believed there wasn't a legal cause for attacking Iraq. It is believed that Iraq was a terrorist ally that was a threat to America. Other countries aren't taking Bush seriously and don't believe that he knows what he's doing. Bush and Blair meet privately at Bush's ranch to discuss the problems regarding the Middle East. Bush believes that since Afghanistan is done, they should just move on to Iraq as a second base. Blair tries, Blair tries convincing Bush that the support from the UN is needed before they can invade Iraq. The British need evidence that Iraq is actually a threat in order to be able to invade them legally. After their conversation, Bush says to the press that the removal of Saddam Hussein is the main goal with this government. Bush believes that since there are new styles of threats, as the UN Charter was created, that means there should be new ways of thinking. Colin Powell, the Secretary of the State, meets with Bush and says how he believes that if the US goes into Iraq without the UN, then the US will be in trouble. Powell says that invading will make America look like a dictatorship and put our allies in trouble. In the Act 2, we can see that the National Security Council reassembles and Dick Cheney, the Vice President of the United States, says that the story should be known as the crisis at the UN, so that it is no longer about America's wrongdoing, but instead makes it about the UN and whether they can deliver or not. Palestinians believe that the UN is a double standard because the UN only does things that benefit themselves but ignore what benefits the other countries outside of the UN. The UN condemns the idea of terrorism but they allow the countries in the Middle East to murder themselves. Cheney states on a TV studio that defeating Iraq would be a crucial hit to the base of terrorism before terrorism is able to escalate to nuclear weapons. Blair is still frustrated because he can't legally allow Britain to go to war because there isn't enough evidence of there being a threat. Blair then tries to get enough information from his resources in order to get evidence to make a legal invasion. Bush addresses to the General Assembly of the United Nations that the first time the world finds out Saddam has nuclear weapons will be when he uses one and it becomes too late. Powell meets with some members of the United Nations to discuss Iraq and Saddam. Dominic de Villepin, Minister of Foreign Affairs, thinks that the US decided on the process to invade Iraq without coming up with a purpose for it. The US have been leaving out other countries when it comes to their decisions for the last two years, so the rest of the UN are cautious when it comes to making plans with the US. The French will help the US if their goal is to disarm Saddam but won't help if the goal is to fully invade Iraq. The House voted 296 to 133, which allows Bush to deploy armed forces when it is necessary and appropriate. The British Parliament believed that Bush will prematurely attack Iraq just to gain more power and oil. Bush, however, says that he wants to go through the UN and only disarm Saddam. He doesn't want there to be a war. The US and the French agreed to having the Resolution 1441, which allows any member state to defend itself against the threat of Iraq. Iraq inspectors commit to produce a full description of the chemical facilities. Saddam won't admit that he has the deadly weapons that the UN are looking for. There is a controversy in Britain because some of the people believe that the Britain should be able to help the US and some say that they should wait. The French make a secret offer to the US that if there are no more resolutions brought up at the UN, then the French will drop their opposition on the war. Powell doesn't think that the US should act without talking about it with Blair first. The US then rejects the offer by the French. Rumsfeld thinks that the US should stop listening to the European countries because the Europeans care more about how the US will react rather than Saddam. Debate breaks out among the American officials about whether the UN is useful and if they should wait on Blair to get permission from him in order to carry out their actions. Bush becomes worried that the British government might end up collapsing. Powell will be in charge of giving the presentation to the UN, showing the powerful case the US has for going to war. 
there have been over 400 inspections across over 300 different sites and there still hasn't been any sign of Iraq having any weapons capable of mass destruction. The UN inspectors need time in order to be able to successfully complete their mission. There are 1 million, sorry, 100 million people protesting across 600 cities, demanding that the inspectors get more time to finish their mission instead of just going straight to war. Britain, Spain and the United States agrees to have a new resolution which allows authorization to use force. They need votes from the Security Council in order to successfully pass the resolution. The British would benefit from putting the statement of the new resolution out the next day because it is believed that no matter the circumstance, the French would vote no on it, which would get rid of the second resolution altogether without it being the Britain's fault. Blair announces that the attempts to pass the new resolution will no longer continue because Jacques Chirac, the president of France, provided pointless diplomacy. Bush commits to working towards peace between Israel and Palestine in order to help the British Parliament survive. Right before dawn in Baghdad, the air raid sirens were a sign that the war was just beginning. The military campaign ends after just 42 days. It will cost nearly a trillion dollars in order to reconstruct Iraq. Powell resigns from the administration during the next election. In an interview, Powell admits that the facts they were given at the time of action ended up being wrong. The last scene of the play focuses on an Iraqi exile. The Iraqi generally states that the American dead are more honored than the dead of the Iraqis. The Iraqi also states that the Iraq was crucified for Saddam Hussein's sins. The Iraqi also states that the people of Iraq are to blame because they didn't take charge of their own country which allowed Saddam to take control of Iraq. Thus, the play ends. So concluding the play, David Hare used the verbatim techniques in his play Stuff Happens to theatricalize the invasion of Iraq, thus presenting a new narrative to the motives and results behind launching this war. With the help of the post-colonial framework, the study introduced a new real story of the historical narrative of the Iraqi war. The study again concludes that Hale's manipulation of historical documentaries and dramatic representation in his play shocked the conscience of the public opinion with the narrative of Iraqi war that was falsified by the American policy to justify their claims. Stuff Happens depicts political issues by presenting a new knowledge different from that communicated in the social media. It is a historical narrative about the abuses of power by the global poles in order to achieve colonies and imperial projects. So friends, hope you got an idea about this play. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.